Hey everyone. So in this project, um, it's going to have two videos and I'm going to introduce HTML and CSS to you guys and we're going to build our first website. So I'll teach you some really basic stuff with HTML, how to set up a document and then how to style it using um, a CSS file. So to get started, you're going to need a folder called first website and then within that you'll need an index.html file and then you cr you'll create another static folder and you'll create a style.css file. So we have these two files. Uh, and if you open it up actually, so if you double click the index.html file, uh, you should see nothing because there's nothing on the page right now. So you can actually write something in the HTML file, hello, and you see it on the screen now, hello. Uh, okay, so the HTML file is basically where the content of your website or web application go. This is where you have things like text, links, images, uh, etc. The CSS file is where you style these things. So you can style this link and give it a color or style this text and give it a color of blue. You can give it, you can underline it and you can do all sorts of things. So I'll show you how to set up a proper HTML document and then how to link the HTML file and the CSS file together. So to get started, you need what's called a doc type at the top. And this is for um, browsers and engines to understand what kind of document they're about to get. So then you start off and you have these brackets and you write HTML. And so this is how you write most of your HTML. You're going to have this bracket and then to close off this HTML, you do the same thing where you put a slash. And so this basically says that you have an opening bracket and a closing one. And in between here, you're going to have um, the necessary components. So you need to have these, uh, H you need to have these sort of brackets in HTML, HTML. And so there are a lot of other types of brackets like head and then you have body, oops, body. So within the head, you're gonna have important things that's in, um, that are important for the document to read. So this is where you'll link your CSS file, you'll give your page a title, you'll give it some meta information such as the author and keywords and stuff like that. So hold on, let me just, uh, dictation. Okay. Okay, I'm just indenting to make it a little easier for, to read for you guys. Okay, so within the head, we'll give our page a title. Title. Uh, first website. And then to link the CSS file, we use the link tag. Except the interesting thing about this is that there's no closing tag. So there's no uh, link closing tag. You just put it all within one link. So the type of file we're linking to this HTML file is text CSS, the rel specifies um, what type of relation it's going to have, so style sheet, and then pref is the link, so static style.css. So in the static folder, style CSS is where our styles are going to go. And so this is the important information we need in head, and then within body, we need um, this is where all of our tags and content goes. So we can have hello world, open it up, and we have hello world. So now we have this CSS file linked, we can actually start modifying um, the text. So what, what we have right now is just body and we have hello world. So we can do something like body, and then in CSS you need these curly brackets to specify styles. Let me just, okay. So now we can do color. This is how you specify what color you want the text to be. And we can make it anything we want. So now if you reload it, you have a red color. So we just got started creating a really basic HTML file, creating the structure for it, and then linking the CSS file. And I've shown you how to uh, modify some of the content within the HTML file. So you have a lot of other properties that over time you memorize, and some you even need to still look up. But you have a lot of interesting things like backgrounds, you can give it a background of blue. Uh, you can, I don't know, text decoration. You can give it an underline. And then you can do something like body hover background um, yellow. So here, if we reload it, we have a background of blue and the text is red and it's underlined. So it looks really ugly. But as soon as I start moving my mouse, the background 
oh, if you hover over the text, then the background changes. So this is a really, uh, it's really flashy and you wouldn't want to actually do that. Uh, okay, so let's get rid of this and let's, so first thing we'll do is we'll structure our document. So what we'll do is we'll build sort of like a portfolio, like a really basic website for yourself. It'll have your name, uh, some links and some hobbies and maybe like a picture. So we'll structure this document first so that we don't need to go back to it and modify it. We'll just be able to start uh, to have most of our code be with, done within the CSS file. So what we'll do is we'll give it a div. So a div is basically like a, a cutoff section um, on your website. So you can have multiple divs and they're basically, they take up the full width of the page and, they cut, and they're their own sections. So you can have sections within sections, you can have one div and then another div below it, etc. So to actually um, be able to access this div um, within the CSS file, we'll give it an ID. We'll name it container. Container, and then within the container we'll have an unordered list. This stands for unordered list. And we'll want to have maybe some links in our header. So, so now we'll give it a class. A class and a head and an ID are ways to access these elements from within the CSS file. Uh, there are some differences in um, IDs and classes. So classes, for example, you can have multiple classes of the same name within the document. Uh, an ID you can only have one of. So you can't do something like this. You can't have a div ID container and then another div ID container. But you can have multiple classes. Oops. You can do this. So um, I'm just having an ID be the parent element and classes be the children of these parents. Okay, so we'll have an unordered list. And then within the list, we'll have list elements, which we specify like, like so. And we'll write, uh, okay, so the first, we'll have a paragraph element, which specifies some text. So within the first list element, we'll have our name. So you can put in your name here, copy and paste this. And within the second one, we can put in a link to Twitter or whatever you want, any social media, and then we can have Facebook. So these will serve as links. So to actually make this a link, we use what's called the anchor, and this is how you specify it. So that the href is very similar to what we did here. It's actually the um, where it's going to be taking you to. So here it's actually locating the style CSS file. Here we're actually linking to Twitter. So for now, we'll, we won't put anything there. And then we need to close this off. So what's great if you have um, <clears throat> if you have a text editor like Sublime or Atom, they automatically close off opening tags. So as you just saw, when I start, when I um, create an opening bracket and I cl click the slash, then it automatically closes off the anchor for me. So same thing here. If I do a anchor ref and it closes it off. Okay, so now if we reload the page, we have Dale Mbrowski, Twitter, Facebook. And if you inspect by right-clicking and then click elements, you can see the document how it um, looks. So like I mentioned before, the div is a section of the website. So if we close it off, we can see the container, it highlights it in blue, it takes up the whole page and it's sectioned off. So now if you click on it, you can see there's um, a, con a section within the section. So you can see now the highlighting changes. So this is the container and this is the header. Um, here are the list elements, we're highlighting them in the document and then you can go within in the list element, select the P, Etc. Okay. Oh, whoops! I actually messed up here. So these need to be closed off. Shouldn't be open. Yeah. So p p p p. So these are paragraph elements. It'll just be easier to um, access the text later. Okay. So we load it. So you can see that we have some default styles here. We have these uh, bullet points, and then there's some padding here. We want to actually get rid of all default styles that are given to us from within a browser. So Google, I'm on Google Chrome right now, it has some default styles. Firefox might have its own styles and Internet Explorer. So we have, there's this thing called the CSS Reset. So if you just Google CSS Reset, you'll come upon a page like this, meyerweb.com. 
And what it does is it basically sets, resets everything to zero. So it has no padding, no colors, no line height, and all these other fancy properties. And what you can do is just take this CSS and paste it into here. So you get something like this. And now if you reload the page, you have no styles, which is great. That's what we want. So let's add, so I'll get into um, designing our web page with our own CSS in a little bit. But let's um, add some more content. So we have this container here, and we have this header class here. Let's add in a div, another div. We'll give it a class. We'll call it uh, content. This will be where our main content will go. And let's decide. We'll have something like an image. So image source. So this time you don't use a, a href. You use a source for the image. And like before, you don't actually have to have a closing tag for an image. As you can see, it doesn't work. If you try and close it off, it just creates a div because it's not sure what to do. So you just have to create an image source like this. And then we'll have, let's just say, a paragraph element, which will have some text like, hello world, I am making a website right now. And then we'll have, let's, let's add another unordered list. And have some hobbies. So we'll have something like running. eating, living. So these are some hobbies. So we'll give it a class hobbies. Okay, so now if we reload the page, we have all of this content on the page. It's put in a sequential order just how we specified it. So you can see we have the header, it's highlighted, and then the content is highlighted right below it. And so that's what the, um, the sections allow us to do. So a div and an unordered list are very similar. They have some inherent properties that are slightly different, but for these purposes, they're very similar. You can see that they're sectioned off and then you can click within it. You can The image doesn't exist right now. You have the paragraph element and you have the whole hobbies list. Okay, so that's basically it for the content. We'll add in uh, this image later in the next video, but so here's a really basic HTML file. I showed you how to get set up and you can change the content to be whatever you want uh, and then let's let's add some basic CSS so what we're gonna do is center all of this and then give it like a background color and give it some spacing so we can uh, differentiate between the different sections so to get started to access the div ID container so everything with it, all our content is contained within this container so we can access the whole container because it has an ID, you can see here, ID. To access IDs, you use the hashtag and CSS, and to access classes, you use the dot. So ID container, and then you have curly, curly braces, and then here you have all your CSS styles. So what we'll do is we'll give it a width of some arbitrary number, 800 pixels. To center it, we do what's called margin auto. This is a very clever way to center um, a container, margin zero auto. It basically gives us no margins um, up below it and above it, and then to the left and right, auto will center it. So then we'll give it a background of DDD. So to specify a background color, you can use the hashtag, and then the, the, the letters and numbers, the representation for the color that you can get online, or you can just give it a word name, like gray, red, so DDD. And then padding. Padding basically pads the container. So let's see how this looks so far. So it's already looking nicer. We basically centered it, gave it a background. We'll add a few more things though. We'll give it a border radius, um, some number, eight pixels, and this will round the borders to make it look nicer. And then we'll give it some um, spacing from the top. So margin top 20 pixels. And then we'll give it a box shadow. Zero pixel specifies the offset from the left, offset from the top, the size, and then we'll just give it a color of black. Okay, so that's the box shadow you can see. It's slightly offset from the top. Uh, it just looks cool. It looks like it's hovering. We gave it um, 
spacing from the top. So the difference between margin and padding is that if we gave it a padding top of 20, the padding is the inside of the container. So if we did padding top, let's just say 50, we get something like this. It's giving some space within the container, but we want space from outside of it, and so that's when we use margin. Okay, so it's already looking better. We'll just have to add some CSS to section off these elements from each other and make it look a little nicer. So in this video, let's go through styling the header. Uh, okay, so to access the header, we do the class because you can see here we have a class. So header. And then, so let's give it a width of 100%. So it's going to fill up the whole width of the container. Um, we'll give a font family. Actually, so we'll give a we'll change the font for the whole container. So we'll put the font here, font family Helvetica. And a lot of these fonts and a lot of these properties, like you see here, you can find online. So if you Google something like box sat box shadow CSS, so the box shadow CSS, you have a whole you have a lot of links for properties, and then it explains how it works. You can try it yourself. See, and you can modify this and then see the result. So this is a good way to play around with it and to look up really interesting properties. Okay, so we'll give it a width of 100%. Um, what else? We'll give it a font size. We'll increase the font size to 26 pixels. And then border. We'll give it a border bottom, 2 pixels, dotted, gray. And so what I'm doing here is I'm using a shortcut. So this would actually um, parse as border bottom size would be two pixels, border bottom type would be dotted, and then border bottom color would be gray. But I'm shortening it all into one line. And then we'll give it some padding at the bottom, 14 pixels. Okay, so now if you reload it, you can see that we have some text, it's bigger, and we have this line that's separating it off. Uh, okay, so now we're going to float uh, the elements to the left. So we want it to not be stacked on top of each other. So we'll do header. And then to access each link or list element within the header, in CSS you can just put a space and access it like the following way. So header, list. And then if you wanted to access each paragraph element within the list, within the unordered list, you would just do header, list, P and it accesses each paragraph element within a list within a header. So right now we're accessing each list. We're going to float it left and we're going to give each one a margin right of 15 pixels. And so now we get, okay, so the problem here, whenever you're floating left or, or aligning elements within a big parent element, you need to specify some sort of overflow property. And this basically says, this basically allows the parent element, in this case is header, to over, to not overflow the list elements. So to basically contain uh, its children within it. So here we just gave it a property of overflow auto. If you reload it now, it works. Uh, there are some other overflow pro um, values like visible, scroll, hidden. Uh, so scroll, for example, if we had a lot of list elements and we gave it a scroll property, it would actually scroll to the left and right. But right now we don't have enough uh, properties, uh, enough values to scroll. So here we have some, we have Daniel Brasky, Twitter, Facebook. If you click on these, nothing happens. We'll add the links later. And yeah, so let's, uh, in the next video, we'll cover how to uh, add some more CSS properties to this. And then we'll add an image uh, to our website.